Hello. Hi. <laughs> We're live. Are we live? We are live. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, I think we had a little bit of feedback there. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Notary Socials. We are so glad to see everyone here. And tonight, what we're trying to do is just provide some value for you notaries out there to learn all about Ron. And we have got some great guests here with us that are experts at Ron. And so what we'll do, we'll just kind of jump into this uh, and we'll see as people come along. And Amy is helping me with some of the technical issues and everybody's helping out. So first, what I'd like to do is introduce Jake Burkhalter. He is an expert with Ron. He's been doing this for a long time. And I'm going to let Jake take the helm here and introduce himself. Thank you so much, Margie. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for spending your evening with us. And I know I will learn a lot from the panelists and from you guys, too. So again, thank you. I'm Jake Burkhalter. I'm a commissioned online notary in Texas since day one, which was July 2018. And I have been a traditional notary since 1999. I am a two decade escrow officer, both national and in Texas. And I hope to contribute in the aspect of what the title companies in the escrow community may expect. So thank you for having me. And also really quick, my uh, teaching partner and mentor is Brenda, and I will let her do her introduction. Thanks, okay. Pat. Thank you, Jake. Um, Jake and I have been teaching together for about three years now, um, going on four. <clears throat> I believe that's right. Um, and so he actually is the reason that I'm as heavily into Ron as I am because he... Um, he, when he's it, when he has a signing service DFW notary and um, when he began to really get interest in his services as, regarding Ron um, he said you know come on you got to help me and so he pulled me kicking and screaming into this career path um, I was going to get there but it was just going to be on my own time and not on his but um, it's been a really great ride um, to learn and to learn from Jake a lot of the things that Title wants and don't doesn't want. And he'll even, you know, call me sometimes that did you really need to send the, that extra email? You know, but what I'm trying to say is he has taught me well on how to make Title happy. And I'm sure that if you stick around and follow him, you'll you'll learn like I have from him. I've been a notary for 25 plus years. I've been doing the signing agent thing since 2004, and I've written a ton of content for the American Association of Notaries as well as notaries.net. And um, we'll mention my blog later, but I also write for myself. And so I'm done speaking, and I'm going to pass the mic over to Jacqueline. Hello, good evening, everyone. So happy to have you guys here. So happy to be on the stage with all these wonderful speakers. I'm Jacqueline Phillips. I'm the owner of the company for you, LLC, mobile notary company. And I also work for Notarize. I am director of notary engagement and education there at Notarize. A little bit about me, um, 20, almost 20 year notary um, coming up next year in 2022. I've been a notary signing agent since 2010. And I've been a Ron notary for almost six years coming up here in January. So truly enjoy the Ron. As most of you know, Virginia, I'm a Virginia notary, does not require training for a notary. So how did I get into remote online notarization? It was my training. I trained with um, Carol Ray. And because of that, when Adam and Pat, the owners of Notarize, were going to launch their company, they didn't have time to train notaries. So they're like, who can we reach out that are the heavy hitters that know how to train notaries. So we reached out to Carol Ray. We met in January of 2016 down in Richmond, Virginia. It was about 30 of us that um, was in the room and we had a 30 minute training on the platform. That's how we learned. And we learned it just like everyone else when you're starting out at six years ago. There was that technology was unheard of, right? And all the training that was involved, it took the notaries 
to learn and train and everything. And um, 5,000 notarizations later, um, I've been training with Notarize. And so I've seen, done a lot of specialty notary work. I've done some refis. I've done some seller packages, done a little bit of everything. So um, I'll be here to bring what information that I've learned and just pass it along to the rest of you. And thank you so much for being with us tonight. And I'm going to pass the mic on to Amy, my friend at Cyberize It. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad you all joined. You know, we are all here to educate and offer valuable insight regarding different ROM platforms and how you should pursue or what options you should look at before venturing into that. And that is invaluable. And it's so, we can't just say this platform is best. There's no perfect platform, but there is the perfect platform for you. And that's what we're going to help you figure out tonight. So that's our goal. And hopefully we're able to achieve it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you all for those introductions. It looked like we've got quite a few people here and we just want to do some shout outs. There's Belinda and we've got Wendy from City what is that city transplant? We've got Dennis Jordan here. Welcome and Nikki's universe. We've got Shelly, Don Moore, Darlena. Thank you. And if you uh, don't mind, if you haven't put anything in the chat there, just if you're excited to be here, put pound Ron in the comments and let us know where you're from. And let's see, we, let's, uh, we've got Betty Thomas and we've just got so many people. We've got... Texas, Joyce, welcome. Marsha from Michigan. Wow, we've got people from all over. Tabitha from Ohio. That's where Amy's from. Yeah, Amy's from Ohio. And then let's see. Ooh, uh, LGBTQ Notary Association. Someone says, hi, Amy. <laughs> and then... Don Moore says she's interested in cyberize it. Okay, great. And also, we just want to let y'all know that we did put a Google Doc form that you can ask questions. You should see that in the chat. And we already have quite a few questions lined up for our panelists here. But don't be shy to do that because we will take those questions first, the people that filled out the Google form. And let's see. Hi to Tony Greaves. Thank you for part of your weekend. Well, thank you for coming. And uh, he's from Maryland. Well, we might get into some discussions about Maryland. We've got Dennis from San Antonio, and he is already a Ron. And then Duffy from Dallas, Texas. Boy, we have got a great turnout. We're so glad that you guys are here. So, uh, Amy, would you like to do a shout out to some of these folks here? We've still got a few. You know, I, I think there's quite a few. I don't know that I can shout out to all of them, but okay, well, I'm so glad you. that you joined. I, I'm I'm excited that you're interested in learning more <laughs> about what a platform can do for you because at the end of the day, that's what every notary needs to look at. What is that pl platform going to do for me? Whether it is facilitating this or facilitating that, the ifs, the ands, the buts. And we as a platform need to be servicing you. And that's the type of perspective I want to bring tonight. So hopefully you all get that. Hey, I have a question for the panelists. Did we all log into Clubhouse? <laughs> I no, think we, we forgot. Anything? Just to let people know that that to come here, I think we forgot. I forgot. So I uh, let me start the room. And then just in case anybody shows up there, we can point them in the direction to come over here, right? Hopefully we won't get any feedback on that. Hi, everybody. We are live on YouTube. So uh, we just came on to Clubhouse to let y'all know to be sure and hop on over hop to, on over to what's, yeah, to, uh, to the YouTube. And the link there, if you don't know, is just, notarytube.com and that'll take you live. If if some of you want to stay in the clubhouse, you're welcome to stay in clubhouse while we talk, but I'm not sure that you'll get the full show. So it'll probably be a lot better. 
Is that you, Brenda? I just turned it off. Maybe turn your phone volume. Oh. Okay. Anyway, so if you are in Clubhouse, join us on YouTube. Just go to, oh, uh, we need to pin a link there. Can you do that, uh, Amy? Or let's see here. I'll do it real quick. Let's see. NotaryTube.com. We are just so excited that y'all are here. Okay. So we had a Clubhouse. Was it last night, y'all, that we did the clubhouse to announce that this was coming? And we had quite a few people in there that had some questions. And one of those questions, y'all, came from Demetria. So, Demetria, I hope you're here. If you are, let us know in the chat. But we're going to answer one of your questions. You asked, what is the best platform for a new Ron notary? So, all of the panelists can answer or anybody that wants to answer is would one of y'all like to take that question for Demetria? Oh, I'll go first. Okay. I'm hesitated. So, you know me, I'm not shy. Um, so the first thing when you're looking at a Ron platform is what type of platform are you looking for? Is it independent such as you bring all of your clients? Is it a hybrid? where they bring you clients and you bring your own, or is it totally employer type based like Notarize is, where they send you all of the work themselves. You first have to distinguish what type of service you want from your platform. And there's those three different options. And every single one of them are valid and they are respected. So don't feel bad if you want entirely everything to come from the platform. It is, it is a good need. It's a good desire. If you want to just bring your own clients completely, again, go get it. You know, you're rocking this, right? So that would be my first tip on how to pick the right platform. And I'm going to let someone else give another factor on that. Brenda, would you like to give it a go? Sure. Um, you know what I, if someone is uh, looking and in particular, if they haven't had a lot of experience, um, I always say look into notarize because um, I did sign up initially, um, but then decided just to stay the course that I was on with Jake and um, Sinex where I'm, I am. And, but for someone who is just learning the ropes, I recommend notarize because the training materials are amazing. And that's it. That's all I've got. Perfect. Jake or Jacqueline. I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to take it from a different perspective. I'm going to take it from the notary perspective as far as not from a platform, but what should a notary be looking for in a platform, right? Um, the Secretary of State gives the um, platform some guidelines. There's regulations that um, they post when um, they're going to do remote online notarization. And yes, um, the platforms are required if that state requires a platform to go through any kind of verification. So the notary needs to probably look first at their Secretary of State and see if there's an approved vendor list. So if your state gives an approved vendor list, you should be looking at that list. Right now, we have over 50 platforms. You're saying, oh, wow, are you serious? There's over 50. Oh, there's more than that, Amy, now? Yes. Okay. So the number has gone up. The last number I heard was like 700. Holy cow. So there you go. So 700 different platforms. And what it is in that, when you're talking about, when they're talking about those numbers, it might be like Jake and Brenda here who are using Sinex, who they're posting that they have a platform. But in the back end, they're using Sinex as their platform. So when you're looking at the numbers like that, yes, there's probably 700 definitely different notaries out there. But all of them are using probably in those first 50 platforms that are out there that are the platforms that everyone kind of tags off of. So mm -hmm. you're going to look to your secretary of state and make sure that they're an approved vendor um, because the, the vendors have to go through the state to make sure that their platform is doing all the stuff in the back work that 
I don't want to do, but Amy has done. <laughs> Making sure all the technology, all the privacy, all, all of that stuff that needs to happen that I don't want to ha know happen. Um, we want to make sure that the states are verifying these platforms. And then I feel comfortable with the approved vendor list. With those platforms, I'm also going to talk about, you're going to make sure that that platform does um, credential analysis and KBA, depending on your state as well, right? Because some platforms allows you to turn that off or turn it on, depending on which transaction that you're working on. But if you're doing a RON transaction, you want to make sure that whatever your state has that requires KBA and credential analysis, like it does in Virginia, you want to make sure that you're on a platform that you're able to turn that feature on. And I could talk a lot more, but I'm going to leave it there and we'll talk some more about some of the other things that you need to be looking for for Ron. Perfect. Well, Can I add something there? Yes. Absolutely, Brenda. Okay. Um, Jacqueline, you know, Texas is one state that does not have a list of yes. approved vendors. That's why um, I know that Notarize is a good platform and I send them your way because, um, you know, because I know it meets the criteria of, you know, whatever state and, but in Texas, it definitely does. And so that's where most of my questions come from Texas. But anyway, I, I'm all about endorsing y'all for new folks. But uh, Sinex, Sinex is on the list on many of the different it states. It is. So but I don't feel it has the solid training step granular step by step that Notarize does for new people. So like Brenda's saying, like if you want to, like if you're a brand new notary, right? You don't want to market. You don't want to do all, any of that stuff. You're going to either be on ours. You're going to be on Amy's, right? The ones that give you that hybrid model of platforms. Um, notary cams, another mm -hmm. hybrid model. So they're going to feed you lead, um, leads as well. So you're going to, you want to start out unless you've already, like, we're going to talk about if you already have a business partner, then you're going to you're really going to take a look at which platform you're going to on. And I know that Brenda and Jake are going to be able to talk about that really mm -hmm. well tonight. Right. And I just want to step in and say, you know, those of you that have been watching my channel know that I love Notarize. And it's a great place to start. So that's just my my little spiel there. So I think the next question was also from Demetria. She had a second part to that, Jacqueline. And she said, since Ron is performed for all states, do people need to know additional information for states other than their own? It's a good question. Great question. So mm -hmm. you got to remember that you are going to be only validated or your notarization is only going to be ruled by your state. So many of you have done, if you've been doing traditional work, it's called split signing, right? So you have the spouse who's out of town or the partner that's out of town and they're going to start possibly in Ohio with Amy, do their, ta do their um, closing, and then they're going to travel to Texas because um, they're there for work. So that Amy will send the docs over to Brenda. Brenda will do her notarization, but she's not going to follow Ohio rules, right? She's mm -hmm. going to follow Texas rules. So right. she's going to notarize the documents based on Texas rules. Amy will um, notarize based on Ohio rules. So it's the same thing like Ron. So even though you might be doing a notarization for a signer in California, I'm in Virginia. I'm going to follow mm -hmm. Virginia rules. Jake, Jake's in Texas. He's going to follow Texas rules. Margie's in Texas. She's going to follow Texas rules. So that's the main thing to remember. Go ahead, Amy. I can tell you're ready to jump in. Well, yeah, I, I got I got an add-on or a caveat to that. So, yes, you as a notary have to follow your own state guidelines, and that makes it legal. But if you're doing general notary work or specialty notary work, however you want to define it, and you're doing a will, states like Florida or Nevada have different stipulations. And you need to ask specific questions that don't invalidate your notarial certificate. But if you don't ask those questions, it will invalidate the document. So I will say it is important to know all of the states that you're dealing with as far as the legalities of what the notary needs to ask. Not that your notarial certificate has to change, but you need to know what to say. And that's important in any Ron transaction. 
just because I would hate for a client of mine who does a will, who is out of Florida, I'm Ohio, I don't have to ask those four questions, but a Florida notary does. In addition to that, that document and video have to be deposited into a qualified custodian account that is going to be held for the time that that person is living plus five or 20 years, depending on the probate of the estate. So understanding those aspects will make you more valuable to your client. It isn't legally required. If you don't know, it's okay. But if you're able to give them that insight and give them that affirmation that this is what you need to do next, it's going to make you more valuable to that client and they're going to come back to you. Brenda, uh huh. you have an opinion on the question or did you have anything to add? No, I have nothing right now. Thank well, you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jacqueline, for that. Now, our next question is from Zara. And again, these were from Clubhouse last night. And I just want to stop for a second and let the people in Clubhouse, we do still have a few people lingering in Clubhouse. You guys hop on over to YouTube and uh, just notarytube.com because we're not really broadcasting on Clubhouse. We just wanted to let y'all know. So hop on over to notarytube.com and watch the show live. We'd love to have y'all come and ask your questions there. So we, the, our next question from last night from Clubhouse was from Zara. And she wanted to know which documents cannot be notarized using Ron. Jake, would you like to take a stab at that? Sure, I'll speak for Texas. In Texas, we should not notarize wills via Ron. The respective laws that kind of dictate estates and the handling of that has never modified to allow that to occur. So just use caution not to do that. Also, our home equity laws, most of you that are on social media know that Texas, we are a different breed and you know have to find offices and special venues for those transactions. So that carries over to Ron. So home equity transactions and line of credits cannot be done by Ron, nor can a power of attorney that is going to be used for a home equity or 50A6 transaction can be done by Ron. Other than that, sky's the limit. Um, in many states, uh, I think we talked lightly about this yesterday and I'll let the ladies kind of add on to it. Um, <clears throat> just because you can do it in your state Will the receiving party in another state accept your notarization? And that's what you're going to have to kind of put that burden onto your client or your signer to let them find that information out. And even though certain counties and states will accept the document because they have to have reciprocation, most SOS offices or whoever your governing body is in your state, they have that on file. So when California did really not... Uh, favor as much, Ron. I know they're still working on that. Let the ladies talk about that. Um, they still accept out-of-state notarizations because of that long-standing requirement. Now, with that said, they may not take it because if someone prints that document, walks into the county clerk or the recorder's office, it's no longer a Ron. It's merely a copy. So always make sure that you uh, coach your signer and have them call the receiving party to make sure they'll accept it. Other than that, at least in Texas and most states, if it can be notarized, it should be able to be done by Ron. Excellent. Great answer there, Jake. Hey, for those of you that are in the audience, if you are enjoying the content so far, just hit pound Ron in the comment to let these fabulous speakers know that you are awake and you're, answer, you're listening to their answers and you appreciate it. Um, did anybody else want to add to to, to that question or should I do I want to add a little bit more to that and I know Jake will definitely agree with me so anything that you can't notarize traditionally right so you can't do um what is it copies of marriage license you can't do um, birth certificates so all the things that you can't do as a traditional notary you also can't do as Ron so make sure that you follow your traditional rules those rules will follow over to Ron Virginia notaries are exactly like Texas notaries. We can't do wills either. So things that you need to know that aren't in the regulations, but we've learned 
the hard way as we go along the way. Um, so Virginia notary should not be doing a, um, a will. And like um, Amy said, Nevada notaries, you can do them. Florida notaries, you can do them. Um, of course, make sure you ask the questions that you need to ask. And of course, whether you, if you're doing as independent, there's going to be a lot more things that you're going to need to know. Like Jake says, is the receiving party going to get it? I'm going to accept it, right? Because there's interstate recognition. We've done this forever. We do split signings all the time, but it's just training and educating. So we're here educating you. So then you can educate your signers on why it is acceptable. And hopefully we can get the news to everyone. Excellent. Thank you, Jacqueline. That's perfect. So we got a lot of people out there with the pound run. Thank you. We're so excited to have you guys here. So the, our next question comes from Reginald and he is asking, well, let's see if we can see his question. He says technical support and what is the fee structure? So Brenda, would you yes, like to? Would you like to take a stab at that? Well, I think that was actually just, for, that was directed at Amy yesterday. Oh, that did you answer about, it? Um, I don't, I think she needs to answer it to explain what, you know, it, that's where the interest was, oh. is in CyberRising. Okay, Amy, and you've got, a, Amy's got a couple of fans in the audience too. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Amy, I don't know if you heard the question, but um, it was from last night in Clubhouse and it was directed to you. So technical support and what is the fee structure for Cyberize It? Okay, so in general, technical, technical support with Cyberize It is you get your own notary support line. You can call or text it. And we can jump into any notarial act in progress if you ask us to. So we can jump in. We can help you facilitate the tagging. We can help you facilitate the notarization. So that is the area that we kind of coined. Um, I don't know that any other platform offers that kind of level. But in addition to that, there is different fee structures with any different platform. Um, with Cyberize It, there's a monthly fee. The transactional fee is based to the compute to the consumer. Sorry, it's to the consumer. So as long as the consumer is paying for the transaction on the website, the notary doesn't have to pay a per transaction fee. But if the notary is accepting all of the fees, they will have to pay the transactional fee themselves. But then they can they can charge the legal limit that they're allowed to outside of the platform so it really is customizable to your needs as far as fees go the only the only obligation you have is the monthly fee i hope that helps answer that thank you thank you did anybody else i think that was directed at amy like you said brenda mm -hmm. okay so the next question that we had uh, it says discussion of DocuSign versus online notarization. That's a good one. Anybody want to take a stab at that or? I do. Okay, I do. Brenda, uh, please do. So many of our signers, Jay, you know, they they'll tell the first they tell um, title or um, uh, or us sometimes. Sometimes you know, sometimes title starts to. Um, sort of qualify them for us, make sure they meet, meet the criteria, but they'll tell title, oh, I've, I've signed on DocuSign a hundred times, you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> well, it's not unless you've got to um, be, you know, you've got to go through the identity process, the, I, I the identity process, the CA and the KBA, which if they, if they came in expecting DocuSign where they were just going to get on their phone and click, click, clickety click. It's not like that, as y'all know. Um, so anyway, we try not to disappoint them and tell them, oh, you're in for a fun now. But most of the time it's okay. But uh, yeah, it just, it's not the same thing. And it is sort of a disappointment. And they get sort of frustrated because a lot of times they'll say, this isn't going to take but a minute. Y'all just wait. We'll go and we're going to, we'll go get the kids from school, you know, so they don't get, you know, mugged or something and they've not scheduled enough time so anyway 
that's that's a long answer to say it's not like DocuSign. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've Very always good. called it, I've called it a marriage between, you could say a marriage between FaceTime and DocuSign, right? It's kind of like <laughs> you're you're on your FaceTime talking to the notary and then DocuSign where you're going to do your paperwork, right? And so Amy is really good about not saying remote online notarization. People are like, what's that? So, But if you tell somebody, oh, you're going to be on FaceTime with the notary, they understand that. It's like, oh, I've done that a million times. Um, and then you're going to tell them, okay, you're going to use DocuSign and you're going to sign your documents. So kind of like I call, I've always called a marriage of the two. And when you explain it in just that bare language to them, they're like, okay, I think I can do this now. And they're not so scared about the technology. Right. That definitely helps because a lot of people just haven't heard about it, right? They just haven't heard about it. So this next question is directed to Jake. And they want to know four types of notarization, and it says e-commission. Does that make sense, that question? It says four types of notarization, e-commission. Did Brenda, do you? Yeah, um, I that? put his name out there because he, uh, it was sort of a, um, uh, a discussion. Amy, I think, started out saying what the types of notarization were, and then Jake, mentioned e-commission. That's just kind of a line of notes there. Oh, I'm so, so I think Jake could go ahead and answer because he and I talked about this before the, before we got together tonight. And I would love to hear what the fifth type of notarization is because I only know of four. So I'm in. Well, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to pass the baton temporarily only because the iPen that you'll talk about I'm curious because you had to go to all these SOSs to get approval. So I'm curious to know what states call it that because I've never heard of that. And we call it something now. So I'm going to yield the floor to you, Amy, and then I'll add on if that's okay with you. That works. So I'll do four and you do one. That's the, the equity and uh, the relationship here, right? So there is traditional notary work, which is where you are in person standing in front of that person in your state of commission and you're signing with an ink pen. That is an important factor. That is the first type of notarial act. The second type is called IPIN, like Jake mentioned. It's called in-person electronic notarization. This means Jake and I are sitting next to each other. We are physically connected in the same room, but we're gonna sign with electronic signatures, just like Ron, but he doesn't have to go through all the KBA and ID validation because he can show me his ID. That is iPen. Okay. So we're not using a pen. We're using a computer to facilitate that signing. The third type is obviously Ron, which is what we're all here about tonight. It's remote online notarization, which means anyone can be anywhere in the world except for the notary. The notary has to be in their state of commission, except for Virginia. Virginia has a few caveats. Yes, go, 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 girl. Uh, anyway, so any you have the notary has to be in their state of commission, and the documents can be signed online with electronic signatures. Understandably, like I mentioned, Virginia has a few caveats for that. But in addition to that. The signer can be anywhere, anywhere in the world. And I'm going to, I'm going to go on my spiel. Okay. I'm a notary. I'm here in Ohio. I'm a Ron notary. I, I can do this. And that signer is standing on the moon. Okay. They're on the moon. They're on Mars. They're on Jupiter, but they have live audio visual connection and they have went through KBA and ID credentialing. That means I can notarize the document for them. So you are not limited to the world. You can notarize a document for anywhere, for anyone, no matter their physical location. And I wanna make sure everyone's clear on that because that is a huge hurdle. It, the laws regarding Ron pertain to the notary, not the client. 
I can notarize a document for a client in California. I can notarize a document for a client in New York. But if I were a New York or California notary, I can't do it via Ron. Not yet. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But not yet. So a New York client can connect to an Ohio notary and facilitate this electronic notarization. And it is completely legal. And I want everyone to know that because a lot of notaries don't understand that that law only applies to them, not the clients. All right, so I'll get off my soapbox for a moment and I'll go to the number four. Number four is REN, which is Remote Ink Notarization. This is legal. I know of two states off the top of my head is uh, Alabama and North Carolina. What's this is this is where the client and the notary connect over over a technology like Ron. So I'm I'm here in Columbus, Ohio, and the signer is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, mind you. Ohio doesn't allow for this, but I'm giving you examples from my local community. But the signer would show on the camera that they're signing with an ink pen. And now they're going to messenger me those papers. They're going to overnight them, FedEx, UPS. They might email me those papers. And now I, as a notary, can print them, receive them, and I'm going to sign with an ink pen. And I'm going to sign with my stamp. Hold on. One minute. One minute. Wait a minute. So I'm going to use my stamp, right? And I'm going to sign that document with a wet stamp or an embosser. And that is a REN. I will return that document back to them. It will have completely wet signatures. It will have an ink or an embosser stamp. And that is completely legal in some states. But like I mentioned, in Ohio, it's not legal. So if you're an Ohio notary, don't touch that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm interested to hear what is number five, Jake, because I don't know what that is. Sorry, my microphone. Um, so after further review, IPEN is basically the same as what I thought the fifth would be. So fifth is an imaginary commission, and that's when people say, oh, I'm an e-notary. And they more. mean there to be, more. do what? You are right. There is one more. Go ahead. There is another one. It's called PRON. So we have traditional, <laughs> we have RON, we have RING, IPEN, and we have PRON. So what PRON is, it's RON, like RIN. So what that part, it goes, it goes through the KPA and the credential analysis, so the signer goes through that portion and what happens is the rest is still paper. So you get the video cam and you write, you sign all the documents and you still have to mail it, FedEx it, courier to the notary for them to do their part. So it's getting like Ron is growing <laughs> as each state wants to do their own little twists and turn. Um, so you're going to need to know as a notary, what does your state allow? And so, of course, PRON came because of COVID. RIN came because of COVID. All these different rules came because of COVID. They were temporary, and most of them are now sunsetted. Um, but mm -hmm. look for some of those regulations to become permanent as um, of the last, what, 12 states um, passed their laws. What state is that that has that New York commission? That was, um, that was a COVID, that was a COVID um, allowance. So it was, it was wrong. It was temporary. It was temporary allowance. Yes. In a state that does not has not enacted Ron, but they Correct. did Ron. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like Ren because it gets printed mm -hmm. and then paper. overnighted to yeah. the party. Mm -hmm. But you still what? had the but you had the credential analysis portion. So we're right. glad because of that part, because me as a notary, I'm gonna be a I don't know, and maybe everyone feels a little bit different. I'm gonna feel a little bit nervous that the signer's just gonna show me their ID in a video and that's it. I, that's just me. I'm just throwing that out there. 
I, I don't feel comfortable. I'm a, a I'm a still a good traditionalist, right? I want to touch that ID, look at it, look for the holograms and all the things that's required when you're touching that ID. And then I trust the platform in the state with the credential analysis and the KBA por portion in the background for me as a notary. So that's just my thoughts on RIN. Um, but yeah, there's actually five of them. Well, good deal. Yeah. What I was mentioning is about the people will loosely use the term e-notary. And you have to be careful with that because if you're a commission online notary and your state physically has, that is a separate commission. A lot of states e-notarization falls under traditional notarization commission. And so I try to look and try to fact check myself. I believe Colorado is a state that does have three separate commissions. So be very careful because you have a national international audience not to say e-notary when your state is either traditional or online. So that's kind of a little trivia there. So I'm done speaking. Oh, very good. So I just want to let the audience know because we are getting quite a bit of questions. Yay. Thank you for the participation. And we're going to try to answer all of your questions. So thank you. Thank you for those great questions. But what we're going to do first is answer the questions from the people that submitted it earlier. If that sounds good, hit pound Ron in the comments. And yeah, we hope to get to all of your questions as long as we can. So one of the next questions that uh, was asked previously was from Carmen and Carmen is a dual commission notary. She's from New York and New Jersey. And her question is, many platforms seem expensive. What plans or packages do you have for someone doing RON 10 times a month or less? Amy, I see your hand up. Oh my goodness. So, okay. So New Jersey specifically is only allowed to charge $2.50 for Whoa. a notarial act. And it doesn't matter if it's in person or RON. Okay. Now their RON laws went into effect October 21st of this year. And I'm sorry, I got sirens going on, but um, they didn't decipher a difference. There's no, there's no pay scale difference. And any RON platform is going to charge at least $10 a transaction. There's nothing cheaper than $10. And that $10 covers KBA, covers ID validation, covers the electronic signature, covers the Zoom or whatever meeting you're doing. There's nothing else out there. In addition to that, you as a raw notary have a monthly fee. It gets very expensive. So if you are looking at adding Ron and you're in New Jersey, you might want to look at something that doesn't have a monthly fee, such as like one notary. So one notary only charges per transaction. It's, it's not necessarily free. I, I don't agree with their advertising that it's free because it's not free. You, they will charge the client X amount and you get a difference of what they keep. That, that is, there is a fee, but that might be a way for you to facilitate your transaction if they are open in New Jersey specifically. If not, then you need to look at a platform similar to mine because mine charges the client and it's not the notary charging, which invalidates or kind of bypasses the law that says that the notary is only allowed to charge X amount because when it's the platform charging, there's no guidelines. I, as a platform, can charge whatever I want. It's industry standard, but it's not the notary charging the fee, which lets you off the hook. So if you're in a state that regulates that and it's lower than $10 per signature, I would definitely look at either mine or notarize or um, one notary as the options so that you can actually turn a profit because that's what we're all here for. Very good. Did anybody else on the panel have an, any input on that one? I'm not sure what the question was. That, that answer lasted a long time. What was the question? <laughs> so 
the question was, what if you're a notary and you're only going to be doing, say, 10 notarizations in a month, <laughs> okay. what is the cheapest platform to use? Okay, and, gotcha. Know, if you are doing 10 a month. Yeah, if you're only doing 10, maybe general notary work, I think would probably be the case. Okay, and, gotcha. you know, I actually think there's a lot of people like that because they're just starting out. They don't want to spend sure. a lot of money investing. So that was actually a pretty good question. And Amy, yeah. thank you for tackling that. It was a good question. It was. Um, you know, Jake and I have the Sinex background and mm -hmm. that's what we've been using. Um, I'm fond, quite fond of the platform just because it's comfortable for me and several other reasons. But anyway, um, you're going to pay like a $250 licensing fee up front, but there's no monthly, you know, no monthly. And it's only $5 for a transaction that, I mean, excuse me, $10 for a transaction that just, you know, with one seal. So it's like you're paying $20 a month, really, if you are looking at it, like what did that cost you spread over a monthly time? So mm -hmm. let's see if they're doing, let's just do a little math, y'all. <laughs> they're doing $10 <laughs> a month, I mean, 10 notarizations a month, and they're able to clear, you know, $20 on each one of those then they're making, you know, $200 and then, you know, whatever their platform fee. So they're still coming out ahead, whether it's you know, it, on Sinex. I'm not going to try to calculate the rest of them. But anyway, that would work too. But the main thing is you don't want to get into the red. And I'm through on that topic. Okay, well, good. <laughs> okay, our next question, y'all, is from Joanne and she's from New York. And she wants to know, and I think uh, the Jacqueline might be able to answer this one. Do you know if or when New York will allow RONs if it was allowed during the pandemic, but I believe it has expired? Yes, I do know about that one. So um, Notarize is heavily involved in the different states on passing RON. And so what's happened with New York, everyone knows that Governor Cuomo got impeached and a new governor is now in place. And so it kind of the um, the bill is now in the Senate. They're kind of waiting for the new governor to kind of get settled in. And then they're able to send that to the new governor and she will be able to sign that. So we're kind of waiting for, yep, crossing our fingers that the Senate can get that over to the governor um, sooner than later so that New York notaries will be able to do Ron. But because, yes, you're right, um, the COVID provisions have been sunsetted. They're no longer there. So all um, New York notaries can do right now is just traditional notarizations. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, cross our fingers. Come on, New York. They'll make it uh, 39 states that would have passed Ron. So we are waiting with beta breath. Okay, the next one sounds like a fun question. It's from Rebecca. She's from Oklahoma. And she says, and Please go through some abbreviations for newbies. I don't even know what RON stands for, she says. <laughs> Following to get info to start as a notary signing agent. So who would like to, let's, let's go, Amy, Jake, Brenda, and Jacqueline. What abbreviation would you like to take? Thanks, oh, sir. I'll take, I'll, I'll take the big one. RON, okay. R-O-N, Remote Online Notarization which in my vocabulary means virtual notarization because that's what the client's going to understand. They are not going to understand Ron. They're going to understand virtual notary. So that is my tidbit. How about you, Jake? I don't really think I have any acronyms, you know, other than NSA? Ron's a good one. How about NSA? Oh, NSA? notary signing agent and you in order to use that you must pass your annual signing agent exam with the national Notary association that name and that phrase is trademarked to them so give them respect and use it appropriately um but yes and as a signing agent um notarize um uh, notary cam all the big ones have relationships with national title companies and you'll get your feet wet and be able to do a nsa transaction so did you call that a twin? There's a twin. Twin, twin. yes. Do you know Which what one? that is? 
Yes, twin is traditional wet ink notarization. So that's oh. your traditional work. So there's twin, rin, prawn, ron. So yes, I it, pin. I pen. So we just want a notary, a notary, a notary at the end of the day, right? <laughs> that's what right. we would like. You're just everything instead of trying to differentiate between the different ones. Kind of like Jake already says, right? You need to know um, what your state allows. Like Washington State's another one. You can be mm -hmm. a traditional, a twin notary, and then you can be a e-notary. And so that's when you're doing the I-pens. And then you can be a remote online notary, which is your raw notary. And you actually have to choose which one. So we ha often have our Washington notaries that are trying to get on the platform. And they're like, which one do I choose? I went to e-notary, but I don't see your name as notarized on there. Or like, you got to go one more over. Go to Ron, and then you'll see our names on the drop down um, because Washington State is one of those states that um, the platforms have to be approved. So, yeah, so you have to know what your state allows. And when you get on your secretary of state, make sure you're checking the right box. Brenda, did you yes, have a vocabulary word? I do. I want to go back to Ron. Okay. And the reason I'm going back is because title companies and lenders aren't going to talk to you about a virtual notary. They mm -hmm. are interested in talking about Ron and uh, online notaries. So don't drop that from your vocabulary. If you want to get into the real estate biz, you know, game, which Jake and I are so heavily into, which is <laughs> loan signing and real estate transactions. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I really don't have anything else that I think is pertinent to this unless okay. you want me to explain something else, but that's what I think is important. Brenda, I think you gave us a really good platform there. Let's talk about it. If you're, you need to know is what lingo you're going to use with each person, right? So with mm -hmm. your title agents, your lenders, you're going to say Ron with your signers, you're going to use a different lingo. You're going to yeah. talk what they understand. Yeah, you're you gonna do. Have to, you you're wanna... going to have to put your hat on when you're talking to your signers to explain it to them in just the beer, just like if you're going to kindergarten, explain, explain it to them. And then when you're talking to your title and lenders, you're going to talk to them like you've got your masters. So they really know what you, that you can show them that you know what you're talking about. That's it. That's it is, uh, you know, I caught on early on in the, in the NSA business that you, that a lot of times title people and Jake can confirm or deny that they would call notaries uh, who were NSAs remote notaries. Um, they would send them out remotely to perform signings. And so that word remote is not a bad word to them. They understand it. So anyway, I, I stay with that, Ron. Um, and then they, there we have some things we chuckle about, but I'm going to just keep that on the down low and we're going to move on. <laughs> So, Rebecca, that was a great question. Thank yeah. you for asking that. And I might just say on my YouTube channel that you're on right now, I did a YouTube with vocabulary and it's strictly audio. I'm not even on it. It's just audio and it answers all of those little abbreviations. So if you have time, you can go back and listen to it and hope that helps. And I hope that answered your question. So what do we have for the next? Oh, I want to stop for a minute and take a break. Everybody in the audience, let us know if you're having your favorite beverage, what that might be, what you're drinking. And uh, panelists, what do y'all have? I have a Coca-Cola. Coke Zero. Coke Zero. What do you have, Jake? Jake? Hold, your favorite up, Jake. hold it up. Let's see. Well, I had a margarita <laughs> earlier, but now I'm doing, and this is not branding or promoting, but I have the sparkling ice. Hey, Jacqueline, what do you have? I didn't bring a drink i was i didn't even think about it i do have my water here but oh, well, there it's you not, go. It's, if it is not being drank she's be got her vodka in her water bottle don't let her fool you <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding, just kidding. So, but i wish i had some vodka here oh, I'm out. yeah y'all put in the audience let us know what you're drinking what or what your favorite beverage is even if you're not drinking it now but what is your favorite beverage we'd like for you to share that I Thank could do some eggnog. That sounds real good. I saw that pop up in there. I might have to get one of the kids to bring me some. I think I might send them a text. Mm, that sounds um, good. <laughs> All right. So we have our next question is from Michelle Deshones. 
I hope I said that right, Michelle. Correct me if I'm wrong. And she is from Florida. And her question is, is this good for loan signings? Who does loan signings? Breaking, uh, Brenda and Jake do a lot, right? Would right. y'all like to I do, I do not do them yet. Jake, Jake does. does. I cry, you know, I whine a little bit. And it's that mother thing. You know, he doesn't want to see his mommy cry. So I'm not his mother, but I try to make him feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> so he does the, the loan signings. Jake. So can you do loan signing agent work on a RON platform? That's the question. Is it, good? is it good? Is a RON platform good for loan signings? It depends on your business model. As the panelists have mentioned, you have option A where you bring your own business. You have option B where the business is brought and you sign up like on Notarize. So um, yes, it's good. It's lucrative if you're on Notarize. And, and I don't want to speak for Miss Jacqueline, but I think you have to achieve a certain rank and, and have your feet soaked and wet and ready to go before they allow you to do that. Um, for me personally, all my business is direct with title companies. And most of my business is NSA work in the absence of a lender. But when there is a lender, we find that a lot of them will initially allow Ron but then they later shoot it down because their investor is still old school. When they buy that loan, it's going to be paper archived in some warehouse somewhere. So we're not quite there yet. But you do have national lenders. Those of you that may be with Amrock, um, that is a wholly owned company by Quicken Loans or Rocket Mortgage. I'm not sure where they're at in that transition. Um, they're the pioneer in that. So, yes, in the near future, because of the pandemic, that's almost becoming the norm in some states with some lenders. It's not wide just yet, but if you have a platform that you can bring your own business, that's something you can certainly advertise, just not lucrative just yet with the loan package. Can Margie, I take you back on that, Margie? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead, Amy. So, so I will say as a platform owner and as a panelist on the ID credentialing for MISMO, all right, the the signature aspect of Ron is fine for a seller's package. I can, I do 10 to 15 a week myself. Okay. In addition to that, it's perfectly fine for a um, cash buyout. I do those as well, but for loans, banks have issues with it. There's a couple of different issues of qualifying aspects which fall into the MISMO category. And MISMO is the certification. So if you think about a notary and you think about loan signing agent, loan signing agent is a certification that you know your stuff. It doesn't mean you know anything more than what you already knew, but it validates who you are and what you can do, right? Does everyone give me a thumbs up, right? You, you know what you're doing, right? Okay. MISMO is the certification for the software platform. MISMO is this thing that says, yes, this platform is 100% safe. But whereas a, an, a loan signing agent, you would pay $70 to $200 for that course. MISMO is like $5,000 a year. Okay, big difference, huge difference. So that's what impacts that ability for that platform to be validated with underwriters. And in different circumstances, that validation comes into play. And especially when it, there's a loan involved because the electronic notarization of that note becomes into a question whether it is legal or not the longevity of where it's stored it's 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 more than what a notary has to do okay I, I will tell you right now you as a notary don't need to worry about this me as a platform owner totally have to worry about this but at the end of the day does it mean that one's better than another no it just means one's got the check mark that the other one doesn't and it comes at a cost so Keep in mind, a lot of banks are leery 
of electronic signatures because they are not sure. There's no legal litigation that says they can foreclose on a property that they have used electronic signatures on. Until MISMO creates this standard, which I'm a part of, um, banks aren't going to get on board. They're not going to jump on the, they're not going to jump on the bandwagon. So I personally foresee one to three years before those really get going. But that doesn't mean there isn't other kind of work that you can do. You're not limited to loan signings. There's a lot. I, Jacqueline will back me up on this. Notarize says, notarize says there's 4.5 billion notarizations in a year. If you only got 2% of those, you would be rich. Ooh. It doesn't take a lot. It only takes a little bit. It takes that one client that turns your business into a profitable mar profitable margin. So, you know, that that's kind of the skinny on the whole legality of that and the implications of it. And it was a little bit dry and I apologize for that, but um, it typically is when you're talking about legal st schematics. So anyone else? Okay. Well, great. Did anybody else have anything to say about that one? If I'm not, gonna pick, I'm going to piggyback just a little bit on. So someone mentioned earlier hybrid. What's a hybrid platform, right? I think this is a great way mm -hmm. that we could talk about this. So you have the different platforms that um, could do that you can do closings on. Like Jake says, he does closings. Um, and of course, the platforms are a little bit different. Like Amy says, for her, she has to pay that 5000 or she calls directly to the underwriter and gets her approval. Us here at Notarize, we went ahead and paid the 5000 and just got it over with so that we're able to work with some of the, um, mm -hmm. the lenders that are out there. So um, like Jake said earlier, we have the ability for you to get your feet wet at that um, partner level. And then you go to the silver level where you're actually doing more than closings. You're doing power attorneys. You're doing... Oh, everything. Carvana. We have um, TIAA as our business partners. So there's different things that you're just doing a lot of specialty notary work out there. So you're getting your feet wet. And then, of course, then you go to the gold level where you're doing closings. Right. And then with that hybrid, we also do like Amy said, so we can feed you leads or you can bring your own clients. And like that's where you as a notary can set your price. You do your whatever the state allows. And then of course, just like loan signing agents, right? We don't charge the closing people by how many seals are in there, right? So you're, you are you have that leeway that you have in there that you can play around in there. So you're gonna need to know what your state rules allows. What's the threshold? Can you charge for a platform fee? Can you charge for knowing your expertise? So you're gonna need to know each state by state what you're gonna need, what you can be allowed to charge. So, and that could, and like I said, it's going to, you're going to know for each state. I can't talk for every state. Every state's different. Um, and so it's going to be something that you're going to have to do some research. And of course, there's lots of stuff out there that you're going to be able to find that on. Thank you, Jacqueline. So those of you in the audience, if you want us to keep going, we need y'all to let us know. Just put pound Ron in the comments because we have been going for an hour now. So if you want us to continue and answer some of these questions, just show us a little participation. Put uh, if you haven't already told us where you're from, let us know where you're from, and put pound R O N to let us know. And Amy, you have something. Okay, so I unmuted myself. So I just un unveiled a, a comment regarding Ron and dual commission. And technically speaking, yes, you can be dual commissioned in multiple states, but it depends on the state. So if you are an Ohio notary, you can't be dual commissioned. You have to be a resident of Ohio or have a legal practice that has a location in Ohio. You have to look at those different state laws. That's going to be state specific. And we are not going to be able to answer that to the level that you're asking. I would look at whether or not your state allows dual commission. If they do allow it, what are the criteria? and then go from there. And I will tell you 
I'll give you a for instance. So Tennessee allows remote online notarization for the, pretty much all of their notaries, okay? But they're bordered to Arkansas. Arkansas requires that it is a, a an attorney. So an attorney is the only one that can do a RON in Arkansas. So even if you are a Tennessee notary who's dual commissioned in Arkansas, unless you're an attorney, that's not going to be valid when you're physically standing in it in Arkansas. So every state's going to be different. And that's kind of what I wanted to get at on that question, because that looked like a great one. How about okay. anyone else? Well, Amy, that actually was one of the questions that was asked in the Google form that we had put out. And that question was asked by Don Moore. So I wanted to recognize Don for asking that question. And you you answered it before. So thank you. And Don is from Tennessee. And her question was, is there a smooth way to work with more than one platform and still be in compliance with my state by having my chosen platform listed along with the technology used? So even though you saw it in the audience, it was also one of our Google form questions. So thank you for answering that. Did anybody else need to piggyback off that? Or did we want to go to the next question? Okay, well, let's go to the next, let's go to the next one then. Javid, J-A-V-I-D, Javid. I'm sorry if I didn't say that right. He is from Florida. And let's see, he says, hi, I'm a certified Ron signer and looking to join your team. So I'm not sure which team. We've got a lot of different platforms represented here. <laughs> Jake and uh, Brenda use Sign Signix, I guess is how you say it, mm -hmm. a lot. And then Amy has her own platform, Cyberize It. And Jacqueline uses Notarize and some other platforms. But if you came in late, Jacqueline works with Notarize. And Jacqueline, do you want to say kind of what you do there at Notarize? <laughs> Well, I am Director of Notary Engagement and Education, so I partner with notaries just um, educating about what RON is. It's amazing how many people still don't uh, don't know RON. I mean, there's tons of people in here, they're still asking about RON, so it's awesome that we're able to, we can talk about this every day and still not touch everyone. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you need to um, be concerned, not concerned, I wouldn't say that, um, the different platforms some of the things that you need as a notary, right? You're going to need a seal. Um, you're going to need a digital certificate. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to need your commission. Commission first, right? Um, but you need those information sometimes for your state. For let's, So let's talk about Florida. So Florida, you, um, you don't need to turn in your digital certificate, but you're going to need one for the platforms that you're going to be working on. So um, depends on what platform you're on. Most of them use Iden Trust. I know Amy uses Iden Trust. Notarizes uses Iden Trust. What does Sinex use? You use Iden Trust as they well? They use their right? own, don't they? Okay. They Sinex use Digicert. They use Digicert. Okay. They use Digicert. So those are the costs that you might need to be concerned about um, as you decide which platform you're on. So how do you keep your cost down? So if you're on Sinex, I don't think you pay for your digital certificate. They give it to you. So it's free. So that's one thing you can think about. Or it's it's probably that two hundred and fifty dollar that you pay yearly. So we could <laughs> we could talk about it that way. But um, or um, other platforms require you to buy it. So it's seventy nine dollars for a one year digital certificate, and then usually you can use that on multiple platforms. So you can use it on Notarize. You can use so you can sign up on Cyberize it, Notarize, Notary Cam. I think uses Ident Trust as well. Um, you can go on their website. They have a whole list of all the different platforms. So when you go to the Ident Trust website, you can see. Okay, if I get my item trust, pay my $79, which other platforms could I be on? Right. So that's one way for you to spread your cost and be mm -hmm. on multiple multiple platforms. Of course, make sure that this, it's a state approved platform. Um, your seal, if you're notarized, we give it to you for free when you mm -hmm. sign up. Um, Amy gives hers for free. Or if you want to, and then they also sells one, I think it's $15 for you to get a seal with them. So that's another way, $10, $10 for your seal, 20, is it up? 20, okay, $20 for your seal with NNA. So you can buy your seal, get it free with us, get it free with, and ours is portable. You can use it on another platform. So um, that's one way to lower your cost a little bit more there. Um, and then of course you have to pay for your commission. So I think 
Virginia's is $45. I think it's $50 for Texas. So you'll have to, um, 25 to, to what? $200 for Ohio? $250 for the training for Ohio to be a Ron. Yes. Oh, oh wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Ohio notaries, and you need to be serious about this if you're going <laughs> to do this. <laughs> so, but there, because there's has training though, right? Texas doesn't have training. Virginia doesn't have training, but Ohio notaries are required to have training with theirs. So that's, so that's your cost um, outlay that you're going to need to worry about. So that's, I think that's probably the things that you need to be just knowing can I take my digital certificate from one platform to another? And then, of course, you're purchasing your commission. And, of course, is your CO portable from one um, platform to the other? And then after that, it's just um, depending on what platform you're on, right? Do you have mm -hmm. a business? Do you already have a business partner that you're already working with, a client that you're already working with, like Jake and Brenda? Seller docs. If, how can you talk and market and say, hey, I'm on a wrong platform. Can I do your seller docs? That's a great way for you to just get in the door and start doing Ron. Of course, you because you already do them as a traditional. If you're already a traditional notary, you're already familiarized with those docs. Take that and now just move it to Ron. And that's a great way for you to get started as well. Amy, I can tell you got something to say Perfect. there. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. No, Jacqueline, you you hit the nail on the head. But at the end of the day, when when you're filling out your application, if you're in a state that allows unlimited platforms, you should put every platform on there that you can think of because then you don't have to ask for permission. If you're in Arizona, they only allow four. If you're in Nevada, they charge $50 each platform you choose. So those states kind of have to be a little more decisive, but when you're filling out that initial application, if you're in Florida, Texas, Ohio, any of those states, Tennessee, Virginia, put every single platform, all 50, okay? Put all 50 because then you never have to ask permission to switch platforms. When you have to switch platforms, it causes a delay. It causes you to lose income. And you don't have to actually sign up with the platform. You only have to list them, which is a very big miscommunication in the market. I don't have to actually sign up with XYZ vendor. I only have to say I might use XYZ vendor. Now, as a notary, what that means to you is you can sit there and you can say, I am a legal Ron notary. I can virtually notarize your document from anywhere in the world. And when that client calls you back and says, well, yeah, I want that. Then you sign up with a platform. That's when you commit to the fee. When you know you have the money coming in. That's huge because you don't want to spend money on something that you don't have revenue to to extend on it. Right. You're not going to have a return on your investment. So I, I wanted to make sure everyone understood that whole aspect of applying for platforms and knowing that you don't have to actually apply with the platform. You just have to name them. It's, it's a big controversy. Okay. Thank you, Amy. And that kind of segues into the next question that I think would be good for Brenda and Jake. This question is from Joyce Turner and she's from Texas. And, and those of you out there may not know that Jake and Brenda are both from Texas. And the question is, how do you get customers? Jake and Brenda. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that. Okay. You Thank you. Brenda. Okay. Um, Okay, first of all, you need to know how to be an NSA and, and, and a very good notary. And excuse me, I've got a oh, guest so here. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. He hears He's the part talking. of the family. <laughs> so that um, that's one part of it. Okay, the second part is that you've got to have good relationships with your signing services and title companies that you're working for. Right. So um, once you do that, 
I would recommend that even though um, it's not really required, you take that little bit of training on the NNA's website that is for online notaries because it does carry some weight. It's not really going to teach you how to use the Notarize, the Cyberize, or the Sinex platform, but it is going to give you a little bit of boost there. And then um, start, you know, do a very nice um, letter or, um, you know, just some way to announce it. I would announce mm -hmm. it to the places that I'm, I'm already working for and they know you, they trust you. So Jake is not my only client. I work for several lawyers and I work for uh, a few other signing services. And to be honest with you, when you get into the real estate part of it, like Jake and I are, um, and I, I want to touch on that a little bit about tagging. Okay. When you do what, you know, the kind that we do, that's pretty labor intensive because we, uh, our, our clients don't already have the tagging built into their loan document, I mean, to their documents. Okay. So what that means is we have to drag all the signatures and, and the text boxes to the right place on the document, make sure it gets filled in correctly. And so while, our fees may be a little bit higher on on packages um, that we receive. It's because we're putting in the labor of tagging. Now, uh, I know that some folks work uh, for Amrock or Pavaso. Um, I don't know about Pavaso, but I've heard Amrock or Notarize. They're get you know that that some lenders are running um, work through those those platforms. And they're not getting paid, you know, as much as they perhaps think they should be. But gosh, they are still making like $30, $50 an hour because mm -hmm. once they get good, you know, they're putting it through just like that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, so you may not see that big amount on that job, but you're still making quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, for the time you've been put in. And I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, thank you. It, yeah. So anyway, marketing is you go ahead and you know, get some kind of neat professional announcement that you are now, you know, you, you're, you've got a credential, you've taken that little test for the NNA and, you know, and you're ready to go. My big thing is professionalism. I do, you know, believe that you've got to present a very professional mm -hmm outward appearance you've got to know what you um how how to describe your you know the documents the process and you've got to be a little bit technical um true because you're gonna have to pull people <laughs> through that process and if you do all those things and, and you know maybe even make a little video because this is going to be about you being on a video um jake and i have a, a piece that we you know, that I've put together that I can share with my attorneys or whatever. He doesn't want any more business. Okay. But he's got enough. <laughs> well, huh? really. I cannot <laughs> take any more. Hey, well, that, that goes to the he question. He handed off work to me. So, you know, there. The but anyway, well, someone was I asking, off, Brenda, I, someone I, was I, asking I, how to join your team. Okay. How to join, <laughs> how to join my team, our team. Yeah. Um, send an email to um jake at no send it to uh if you're asking how to get uh to work for him yeah um he might be able to take one or two people but he he's got some pretty high level uh questions for you so send yeah. send an email um you can send it to uh jake or brenda which one jake at your trainers at notarystart.com. Let me put that that's in the it. comments. So it's trainers at notarystart.com. That's right. That's right. Oh, um, and so I wanted to have a shout out to Christine Esposito. She's from the Notary Signing Agent Network. Um, I think several, I see several people here and I just want to thank y'all for showing up and coming and I appreciate y'all. We, we're just about to hit 25,000 notaries in that group. So I appreciate them. Thank wow. You. Brenda, did you yeah. say 25,000? 
Uh-huh. Whoa. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, that we're proud of it. Amazing. They, were, they usually just get to see the ugly end of me who's always griping about something because of, <laughs> you know, I, I, because we're putting those rules out there. But sorry, I've taken up enough time. Oh, no. Thank you so much. That's a wealth of information. That's awesome. Jay, did you want to add anything to what your partner Brenda said? Oh, absolutely. I think when you are very confident and comfortable with your state laws and you have an existing relationship with whether it's direct with the signing service, they don't know that you are out there doing or available for Ron. So you need to update all your bios. Mm -hmm. For me, I started with Ron. Basically, I actually, when I was still at a title company, I followed it when it was still in, you know, Texas was a third state. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <clears throat> through the legislative process, was it going to pass? Was it going to fail? So I'm, you know, proactive thinking how, you know, a title company, we know about this, but we have to make sure our real estate agents that we offer this to them and to the lenders and so forth. So once I became uh, individual as a separate company owner, um, people came to me with questions because I was able to tell them this is what we can and can't do in Texas. This is plan B. This is plan C. That's how I grew my business. And all of my business is referral and word of mouth. I don't even have a website, which I know that when you're a signing agent or if you do Ron, you need to have some type of business presence online. But if you have the foundation ready to go and you have a platform that you're ready to invest in and you already have enough traction, then that's when you really should start getting that business. But I went from two individual escrow officers. I now have 60 direct offices nationwide wow. that I do Ron for. Woo. <laughs> and that's a year and a half time. We all want to be on Jake and Brenda's team. <laughs> Good He'll job. You to death. Congratulations. You to death. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times people don't realize, you know, when a lender shoots down, because uh, if there's a lender involved and it's a residential transaction, they still have a lot of influence even on the seller. And the seller's like, hey, Mr. Lender, this is your buyer. You know, why are you, you know, involved? Mm -hmm. Because of that re and that deed that's going to take place. Uh, but a lot of people are traveling, you know, they're international now with COVID people are in lockdown in their you know, native country or where they're traveling from. And so COVID and in, in retrospect has been a, uh, a blessing for Ron and for my business. Yeah. Um, so anyways, <laughs> I'm able to flip a lot of those to power attorneys with Ron. So if the lender says no, you, the seller can't sign by Ron, but they can sign a power attorney by Ron. So you still have that relationship. And that's how I grew most of my business. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Did either one, Jacqueline or Amy, did y'all want to answer any of that? I, I think they did a great They're job. Probably like, y'all talk so much. What's that? What's the question? <laughs> we'll go to the next question. Yeah, then. I was going to say, I don't remember the question. So okay. I'm in. Because um, we still have quite a few questions to go. Those of you in the audience, we hope you're not getting tired. You just let us know if you want us to keep going. Put pound going and we will keep going. But we need to hear from y'all that you want us to keep answering these questions because we still have some that y'all sent in ahead of time. But we also have some in the comments that we haven't even gotten to yet. So if you want us to keep going, just either put pound Ron or pound going to let us know. And while you're doing that, we're going to go ahead and take the next question, which is kind of falls in line with what y'all were just talking about. It is from... Tani Greaves, T-A-N-I Greaves. She's from Maryland and she wants to know which digital certificate do you recommend? Is there one that works for all platforms, including Pavasso, et cetera? Good question. Good question. Oh Amy. my goodness. So that, that stumped me. I'm, I was going to say the cheapest, you okay. know, because notarized is, notarizes certificate that works with me is like $62 a year, which is great. It's the cheapest one out there, but honestly, I don't know what works with Pavasso. Do you Jacqueline? They give their, I, if I remember right, when I did theirs, whew, eons ago, they provided us our digital certificate. Do you, oh, Margie knows go Margie. Well, with Amrock, if you're signed up with Amrock, which I am, and I got Pavasso, they, they took the, um, the ident trust 
I don't know if they take other ones, but they did take the I didn't trust. Are y'all, Jake and Brenda, are y'all on Pavasso at all? No. I'm not. Mm -mm. Okay. But yeah, they do. They do take that one. So I didn't trust keeps on giving. Yes. Yeah, okay, so the next question. Oh, were you going to say something, Jay? Uh, just really quick. I had a, uh, just a quick question for Jacqueline. Uh, well, I think I know the answer, but Notarize is still independently owned as a, their own entity. Is that correct? Okay. Well, Pavasso is owned by Old Republic. Notary Cam is owned by Stuart Title. Mm -hmm. And what's our other one that I overlooked already? Cyberize is owned by Amy. <laughs> <laughs> The, the other one, there's Notary Cam. Uh, the, the other one that's owned, now owned by the Fidelity Title Group and family of companies. So uh, I, what's nice about Notarize not to give a side plug is that you guys are still independent and your training actually comes from notaries and staff members who are commissioned as notaries. So that's a huge win for Notarize. And, and Cyberize. Too. And Cyberize. Right. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> yes, you. Yeah, we both earned applause. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Shake. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's a good point, right? Because, like, um, you were saying earlier, you need that platform to give you some um, technical support. So that's something that you always need to look at. You need to be on a platform that's going to be able to give you tech support when you're stuck at KBA, you're stuck at credential analysis, mm -hmm. the signers will get stuck there. Um, and how do you work it through? How do you know what the next step is? And I love, Amy always says, you need to, you need to be able to pivot, right? So let's say that the signer doesn't pass KBA or credential analysis. How are we going to get around that? Especially if you're, you're doing a, a loan and the lender has allowed on remote online notarization. So you need to know, does your state allow cred um, credible witness, right? Mm -hmm. So does my state allow credible witness? If it does, then that's one way you as a notary, you're going to need to know to pivot. Does your platform allow credible witness, right? Your state may allow it, but if the platform hasn't built that technology, then you're going to need to be able to pivot. You might need to call and say, hey, um, I'm not able to do this as a Ron. It might need to go to paper. It might need to be papered out. So you need to have, like Jake said, I love how you said it. You need to have plan A, plan B, uh -huh. and sometimes plan C in place for when you might have, you might run into some technical issues. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about is how is the signer connecting? Some of the notaries are like, oh, how are the signers connecting? Sometimes the signers are on their phone, depending on the platform. Sometimes they're on their iPad, depending mm -hmm. on the platform. Sometimes they're on their computer. And sometimes they get on the computer and guess what the computer doesn't have? It doesn't have a webcam. Like mm. most people don't think about that, right? So you're thinking, <laughs> uh, you're meeting with the notary virtually. People really don't think, they're. sometimes they don't really think they're meeting with someone. They think it's a DocuSign like Brenda said. And so I've had, I've had signers get on and they're like, oh, I'm meeting with a real person? I'm like, yes. And I actually had a woman says, oh, I haven't put my makeup on yet. <laughs> Cancel the call. How funny. <laughs> I've had that happen too. They go, or they have curlers in their hair in a robe and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was going to be yes. on camera. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be on camera. So you need to be able to pivot for those moments because they will, they will happen. They don't they'll hang up. <laughs> they'll, they'll hang up. Or so you might have to start all over, but um, know what side, know what's, what the signer is going to be on. And you as a notary, you need to make sure you have a good connection as well, right? I recommend that the notary be on a laptop or a computer. Please yes. don't try to do this on your iPad. Don't try to do this on your phone. Mm -hmm. The screen's not going to be big enough. Brenda said it earlier. You need to look professional. Right. Look at all of our backgrounds. Professional backgrounds. I don't want to see a notary in her bed or his bed oh, taking a call. Oh. You are on video, folks. You, this is part of your journal now. It's not like when you can go to a traditional, no one's going to know what you're going to look like. You're on audio video. It's a secure video. So they were able to go back and watch that video. So you want to make sure that you present yourself professional, like you said, for your marketing portion. And then when you're on the call with that signer and I'll yield the mic. Very good. Oh my gosh. So I got to throw a two cents in there. Okay. So the two points, one, my oldest client is 101 years old. Wow. 
Okay. I think I hold the market there. Just saying. Japanese citizen had to valet her ID in a nursing home. They helped her get through it. Yes. But we did it. And that's all that matters at the end of the day with Ron. Now, on a side note, if you hear snoring, it is totally my dogs because I'm not in my bedroom. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh. Amy, what are you drinking there? You sound like you're having a lot of fun. Having having a good time time. Tonight. What is it? Oh, uh, I have some wine. But okay. at the end of the day, though, the dog sleeps right under my feet and he will snore till the yes. end of the day. Oh, yeah, my God. God. I've heard him. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, um, guys. Are we well, ready for the next question? Yeah, Jake. The next question is from Lena. She is from Wisconsin and she wants to know. Well, this is for CyberEyes. It. She wants to know when will CyberEyes platform be available for Wisconsin? Can you answer that question? And then we'll. I'm going to have to actually apply to Wisconsin first. So okay. um, I don't know yet, but I did see another comment in there asking about Maryland. Okay. And Maryland requires a three year in business um, regulation for a platform. So I can't apply in Maryland for another two and a half years. Okay, thank you for that. The next question, hmm, I don't know if you saw this one, Jacqueline, but it is for you. It's from Greg, G-R-A-I-G. Did you see that one? Okay, he's from Florida, and I guess he's having a little bit of difficulty with the onboarding process with Notarize, and he wants to know, he says, uh, why is the onboard process on Notarize so difficult? Um and let's see, he says, I can't find anyone to help finish the onboard process. I've been trying now going on a year. Hmm. Well, hmm, that doesn't I, sound good. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound right. I, I'm on Notarize. Mm -hmm. And if you get all your ducks in a row, you get your certificate, you get your e-sale, you provide all of the information accurately that they want, and they're going to notify you, hey, you didn't do this right or you didn't do that right. You have to be able to, especially as a remote online notary, to follow instructions. So um, just <laughs> go back, go back and look at your at, at what you signed up for and see if there's something that you might be missing because that definitely shouldn't be the case. Now I know Notarize is very, very popular and there's lots of people trying to get on, but they're going to respond. So, um, so I what are, so ahead, Marge, I, I agree with you. So I think what the, um, the notary should do is log back into the platform mm -hmm. and there's usually that banner across the top that would say whether your, um, whether your profile is compliant or not. And if it isn't, normally on the left-hand side, there'll be some red exclamation points. Go and look and see if any of those red exclamation points need to be filled out. Fill that information in. And once you do that, you know that you need to um, email notaryonboarding at notarize.com. And they will respond to you within 24 to 48 hours and get you started on that onboarding process again. Awesome. Thank you, Jacqueline. I know that there might be people that have that question. So, uh, Greg, I hope that answered your question. And thank you for asking that. Let's go to the next question. It is from, let's see, Angela Parks. And she's from Texas. And she wants to know, how do you, how do you complete copy certifications? And she says, I haven't had time to contact Texas SOS to explain exactly how this can be done. Allegedly, it is allowed, but I can't see how, since the original doc can't actually be handled by the notary. So keep in mind, panelists, that she's from Texas. Does anybody, Jake or Brenda, since they're from Texas, do y'all do y'all ever do any copy certifications uh, via Ron? Well, <laughs> we've had this discussion. We have had this discussion. We have not called the Secretary of State's office because we don't haven't had to, but. Yeah. We are of the non-legal opinion that yes. a um, that the any that the document that we notarize it's you know that it that we can produce a copy of it a certified copy because it is the same as the original. If you see what I'm saying, um, because the original is actually that electronic document. That's the original record. 
and I, you know, I can pontificate like I know what I'm talking about, but it's really all I can say is that is the original record that you notarized. And Amy, do you do have a question too, or I mean, an answer to that, a response? I have a comment, and I think this is kind of where Brenda's going with it. It isn't necessarily that we're certifying a copy. We're certifying a copy by document custodian. So they as ascertain, they ascertain that, yes, this is an exact copy, and we're notarizing their signature under oath or an acknowledgement, depending on what they, they declare. But in Ohio, I can't certify a document, but I can certify a signature. And that is a valid aspect with copy quote unquote certification. It's a backdoor, I guess I would call it. Okay, perfect. Moving right along, we're almost through these questions, y'all. Monique from Texas, she wants to know, this is a new career as an independent full-time Ron, and she says her background is HR operations, and she's also a commissioned notary, and she would appreciate suggestions to attract clients to the business in lieu of of using notarize. I'm not making enough revenue and just need help. Thanks. I think that kind of goes to one of the other questions about marketing. Did anybody else have another thought about that? If not, I think we answered that one pretty, pretty good. Thank you for submitting that, uh, Monique. I think Jake, from Jake Texas. do you want to say something about who you and Brenda represent? Oh, real quick. <clears throat> I know there's some comments here and I don't want to go out of order. Um, Brenda and I are users of the Sonix platform. We are not here representing them. We're not employed by them. Uh, we've had growing pains with them. They've had growing pains with us. Um, <laughs> but we're here just as self-claimed power users where every time there was glitches or upgrades, we've been heavily involved with them. So we're entering as fellow users of the platform Sonics. We're not employed by them. We don't get a dime for saying we use them right. uh, unless we provide our affiliate link, which we seldom do because, you know, I would rather not get paid for re referring somebody because y'all are my people. I don't want anybody to get mad at me. So. Very good. No, no affiliate link there. I know. <laughs> okay. So the next question is from Tony Ball from New Jersey and they want to know, are the fees less because there's no travel involved? And I think New Jersey is the state that doesn't pay. Doesn't pay. I've not had a, a lesser fee, you know, from Ron. But what I, I wanted to go back to is that if you are in a platform where you're getting already tagged documents, it's very easy and quick. So you're not, you don't have paper, you don't have mileage, you don't have anything except sit down, do the notarial acts while that, and you know, and they sign. Now, if you're in a model like Jake and I are right now, where you're doing that labor intensive tagging, you know, you're not going to want to do that for less, a lot less money. Right. Mm -mm. Okay. So what your traditional is. So. Our next question is from Michelle from Tennessee, and she wants to know, Notarize, will you ever provide clients for Tennessee? And those of you that are new on here might not know that Notarize offers <coughs> clients to four states, and I'll let Jacqueline take that over. All right, so we have what we call our Notary on Demand. So it's where Notarize has partnered with different clients and they are just using our platform as the software provider. And then we use independent contractors to notarize the documents that these clients need notarized. So um, with that model, we give you clients, you notarize the documents, and um, that's how we do that model. Um, so that's the one that Tennessee notaries. So for our Tennessee notaries right now, all we have is where you're your independent contractor and you're bringing your own clients. So yes, we are looking into that. Um, it's something that you're probably going to hear announced probably beginning of the year, hopefully, if not sooner, 
But okay. yes, we are. We have had so many notaries ask about that. And the best way to find out when we're going to roll that out is, of course, signing up on our platform, getting on our wait on our wait list. Um, and then we will email you and let you know when we have rolled out Notary on Demand for the following states that we'll be rolling those out in. Can't wait. Can't wait to find out. Perfect. So if y'all are still awake in the audience, give us a pound, Ron. Let us know you want us to keep going. If you want us to keep going, we will continue to answer. Brenda and Jake, are y'all okay? Or did y'all have? Yes. I just want to tell private person who wants to know about Sinex's fees that, yes, you set your own fees. They do not set them for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, private person. Yep. <laughs> We're wondering who you are. No, <laughs> Notarize does if you're a Tennessee or Washington notary. So those are the states that you are allowed to set your own fees. So we are going to be rolling that out in some states even sooner than next year. So look for that announcement to be coming out really soon. I can't wait. I hope Texas is one. <laughs> okay. So the next question is from Joyce Turner. And she wants to know, she's from Texas. She wants to know, can you, can you do signing agent work with Ron in Texas? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I think Jake I think we and covered that earlier. Yeah. Jake yeah. and Brenda answered that. Thank you, Joyce, for that question. We do have a little bit of overlap. And the next question is from Joyce, but this is for Cyberize It. And Joyce is in Texas, Amy. She wants to know, how do you get clients with Cyberize It platform? And then she also wants to know, Jake, what is Jake's platform? So, Amy, how do you get clients with your Cyberize It platform? Okay, so we are a hybrid platform, which means someone can go to our website and connect to a notary. But we, are, we don't have an algorithm like Notarize does. It doesn't necessarily generate to every single notary on the platform. The client is in 100% control of who they send that notarization to. So I don't have control. You don't have control. The, the, the signer actually has the control of who they pick. So I can't say that you will get clients from our platform because at the end of the day, I don't have any say in it. It's all up to the client. Uh, a matter of facilitation of whether you meet their standards. Are you in the right state? Or do you speak the right language? Are you the right type of notary? Were you at the top of their list? Were you logged in? You know, there's lots of different aspects that come into play with how a client picks you on the CyberIsaac platform. So, I don't have an automated system and I won't guarantee that you get clients from my platform. Could it happen? Yes. We have new clients joining every day, but whether or not they have a notary or they connect to a different notary, I can't tell you. Um, it really depends on whether you are available and online yeah. and willing to take that notarial act. So hopefully that helps. Okay, perfect. The next question is from Sharon in Michigan. And this is kind of a long question. Let's see if we've already answered it. She says, my state requires us to sign up with Ron platforms before they approve us for Ron, but we can't sign up because they want experience. She says, how can we get approved? Anybody want to take a stab at that? Or have we answered it? Oh, okay. I will give you one. Go ahead. I'm Go sorry. ahead, Brenda. I wanted to know what, um, I, that's a very good question. I wanted you to read that again, Margie, because I think I know the answer, but I want to make sure before. Okay. The question is, she, this is Sharon from Michigan. She okay. wants to know, my state requires us to sign up with Ron platforms before they approve them for their Ron commission. She says, but we can't sign up because they want experience. I guess she's saying the platforms want experience. How can we get approved? Okay. She's look, it sounds like what she's looking at are like Pavasso and um, ClearSign and those platforms that are already uh, tied to a lender or title company. Is that the way it is? Okay. So. Hmm. What I mean, like if you were on the Sinex platform, you know, um, they will put once you've done 50 notarizations, you will get you can get on the um, 
their directory, okay? So <clears throat> 50 may sound like a lot, but if you just do a few every year, you're going to get closer and closer. Like if you do, I mean, do a few every month, I'm sorry. Do a few, you know, I know that you don't want to spend a lot of money on doing notarizations that aren't going to get you anywhere, but it does give you some credibility to do just some little general things. Now, one notary, I think will also take in, you know, that you don't have to be, one notary is one of those that you don't have to go through a whole big process to start getting notarizations. Um, Sinex, you don't have to. And they do have that perk of putting you on a list of experienced notaries. That helps. But, you know, you're just, I think, okay, it sounds like, see, in Texas, we have to have a platform before we can even apply to be an online notary. Is that your experience? Um, well, you because you need to know what kind of certificate you're going to have and that sort of thing. So you kind of got to have that certificate and the platform to sign your application. I've chased a big rabbit here. But anyway, uh, you just need to find those little notarizations where you can. But those kind of platforms that are telling you you've got to have experience, those are not you don't have any control over those. It's what I guess I'm trying to say. You well, there's can't a, make them let you on. There's a follow-up question that she has in here. And she says, Amy, does your platform allow uh, them to practice on the platform, even though mm -hmm. you're not a vendor in Michigan yet? So she's wanting to get a little ahead of the game, maybe to start practicing before. You know, that's a great question. Um, one, I have applied and I've sent numerous emails to Michigan and they won't respond to me. I've called, I've emailed, I can't get a status on my application, just saying. Anyway, wow. um, but at the end of the day, if you have Adobe DX, which allows for the Adobe sign, you can tag any document, send it yourself, and it will. It, it's the same idea on any platform. You tag a document, you specify the size, you specify who's signing it, and that's it. So if you have the Adobe DX, you can get ahead of the game on any platform, mine included, because Adobe is one of my my partners. But at the end of the day, if you wanted to practice. Get that $15 a month subscription. Pretend that you're sending a document to someone, tag it appropriately, and, and you'll be able to, you'll be ahead of the game. You'll be you'll be a, a gold star with any platform. So hopefully that helps. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Amy. And then Sharon's last question: are there platforms that are free to sign up with? It depends on what you want to call free, right? It's kind of, I mean, we've already said that. Right. Some platforms you sign up and you they keep part of the fee, but it's free. Um, or sometimes you have to pay a little bit up front as a startup fee. So it just depends on how you want to define free. Exactly. Um, and you're right, Jacqueline, we mm -hmm. kind of covered that. Some of these yep. are duplicate and we'll just, we'll mention the people and thank them for asking the question and we'll just go on because there were some questions in the actual chat. The next question was from Joyce Turner. She's with Best Practices Tax and Notary, and she want, she's from Texas. Her question was, how do you get customers on Cyberize it? Do you bring your own, or how does this work? And I think that's been answered, that right? Been answered. Yep. So thank you. Unless, Amy, you needed to add anything. Joyce, thank you for that. So guys, guess what? That takes care of all the Google Form questions. Awesome. And Amy, do you know how our names disappeared? They're no longer on the... Um, what um, happened? Yeah, they just. I don't even know. Remove, remove the comment. Oh, oh I don't know who I am anymore. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Banner. Remove. There it is. There it oh, is. Perfect. Uh -huh. See, I roll. Okay. So let's go up to the very, very top, y'all, and see who was the first person to ask a question tonight because they have been waiting patiently, right? Let's see if we can get a couple of those. Do you see any? Uh, do y'all see any questions? Uh, while we're looking for the question, I just want to uh, say to Zara 
Um, I'm sorry about mistreating my dog tonight. And I did. And she, <laughs> she, said, she said that she felt like I was just neglecting this poor little soul back here. Okay. And thank you for sending um, all your members a note. Thank you for yeah. saying my dog's adorable too. Thank you. Let's see. We already answered that one. I know. Let's get to some of the questions in here. And if y'all want us to keep going, just put pound Ron and we'll answer the rest of these questions. I'm going to have to go get some pizza or something, though. I've got to go to the kitchen. I'll just go up. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I while Mark is kind of going through those to see if she's finding any more questions, I think let's no, just kind no. of redirect the room back a little bit. So tonight we're talking about Thank platforms, you. right? Right. Um, what, what's a good platform for you as a notary, right? So we already discussed, and if you kind of listen to this again, we kind of redirect it back as if your state gives a proof vendor list, that's probably the first place you're going to want to look for is that platform on an approved vendor list. If you're like Texas, there isn't one. I think you can call the Secretary of State and try to wiggle it out of them. But I know them, Texas SOS, they can be real tough down there. So, um, <laughs> so, you need to, um, so you need to make sure that you're on approved vendor list. And if your your state doesn't give an approved vendor list and you're a RON, you're going to want to make sure that you're looking for some things. Does your platform allow you to do KBA and credential analysis? Those two things are required in every state in order for you to do RON. Your signer has to go through KBA. We're going to go through some acronyms. So that's one of them. So what's KBA? Knowledge-based authentication. Mm -hmm. So what's knowledge-based authentication? That's okay, you're just throwing out terms at me now. So this is like when you lock yourself out of the bank, right? And they give you those five questions that you need to answer that you only know. Like, who did you get your car loan with with that? Uh, 2020 um, Nissan vehicle that you got. So those kind of questions. When you lived um, on this street or this, pick one of the streets that you lived on, or does this relative live in this place? Some of those answers you need to know it, it's either true or it's not true. So you need to be able to answer those questions. So that's what knowledge-based authentication is. Then you have credential analysis, right? So that's where the platform takes an ID and looks, does a visual inspection of the back and the front of that ID to make sure that ID is valid per that um, state. So you want to make sure that your platform is doing both KBA and credential analysis. Both of those have to happen. Some of platforms right. do it where they send them a text and the signer does it out of the platform. Some of them send them an email. Um, you just need to know how your platform does it. Um, and then, or some platforms do it involved in the whole onboarding process of the signer. Do you have something, Amy? You want to throw in there? Oh, I'm totally agree in agreement with you. But, you know, keep in mind, anyone that's going to go through the system needs to have some type of U.S.-based history. Yes. Credit, property ownership, vehicle ownership. Because if you don't have that, that knowledge-based authentication, that ID quiz, that like I coin it, that quiz about you that only you are going to know is not going to be available because you're not going to have those information. If you have never lived here, if you've never actually engaged in a, in a property with your personal name, not your LLC, that's an important factor. It, you're not going to be able to present those questions and that's when you have to revert to the credible witness. So take it from there, but I'm, I'm totally on board. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. So like we said, we got to pivot. So if they can do those KBA questions, then you need to know if your state does um, cred credible witness. Then of course, then the other part of that is making sure that you are, are using a the platform that you're on has a secure audio video communication technology why? Because your video is now part of your journal. So you used to, you didn't have that in traditional, right? There was nobody videotaping you with credit with Ron or remote online notarization, as we talked about tonight. Part of your journal is that secure audio video technology. So you're going to make sure that your um, the platform you're on has credential analysis, has KBA, and has a secure audio video technology. So those are the things that you as a notary need to know when you are going to be doing remote online notarization. 
and I'll let you go for it, Margie. I'm sure you found some questions. And I think you popped one up on your screen there. Yes. So I was popping some up so that the panelists, if you see a question that you want to answer uh, before we wrap this up, because it is starting to get a little bit late and, and yep. I'm fine. If everybody else is, if they keep putting that pound, keep going, then we can keep going as long as the panelists, Jake and Brenda are still good. <laughs> Otherwise we can wrap it up. So it's yep. like it's 955. Why don't we put a time limit on it and maybe say uh, we'll go another 20 minutes. Sounds How's that sound? Okay, Perfect. so we'll see how many we can get answered. And so what I'm going to do is put some questions up there. And then if you see one you want to answer, go ahead and answer. Does this look like one you want to answer, Jacqueline? Absolutely. Okay. I'll take this one. So um, it looks like Donna McGee Christie asking a question here about Indiana and Notarize. So what we have is, let's go back to that beginning, right? Every platform has different models. So for our model, for our bring your own transaction, we have that in the state of Indiana. So that's where you would have to be working with a title agent or a lender on our platform that has their own panel of notaries in order to perform their closings or their business transactions. So you would um, have to be working directly with one of our business partners, not as on our notary on demand. Is Indiana on the on the roadmap, I'm sure it is because everyone's wanting um, notary on demand or wanting bringing your own transaction. So that is why Indiana is one of um, the states that are approved with notarized or notarized approved with them, I should say. Um, but you're not able to do that notary on demand or bring your own transaction yet. Perfect. Thank you. Let's see if, if y'all saw a previous question that that flashed up there and you wanted to answer that. That's OK. Here's one on states that only allow for Ron platform like Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for finding which one is right for you without breaking the bank? <laughs> I'll, I'll take that one. So I'm approved in Oklahoma. No, anyway. <laughs> Are you? Are you I saying? am. I am. Okay. That was one of the first states that approved me. But at, at the end of the day, you need to look at the monthly fee, the setup fee, the requirements of the platform. How long are you engaged in a contract? Every platform is going to have different criteria. So I can't tell you what's the best one for you because I don't know what you're going to do. If you've got a good client base and you're going to bring all of these people and you're going to do a hundred transactions a month, look, look, well, we're going to use a hundred because that's my gold standard. Okay. 100 transactions a month means my platform's free, but another platform may not be that way. So you have to look at what you're going to bring to the table to make that valuable to you or not. And that is what's going to make it reasonable or profitable to you as a notary. Perfect. Thank you. See, Christine Esposito, does anybody want to, let's see, how does notarized loan signings compare to Nexus, which Amrock Rocket Mortgage utilizes? I think I'm, that she's asking um, a question that Jacqueline could answer. I would okay. say I've right. done both. Well, I, have, I can't say I've done both. I've done hybrids with Amrock. I still do hybrids with Amrock. Um, so the difference between theirs kind of goes back to what Amy said, or I should say what um, Brenda says, they tag the documents for me, right? So I don't have to worry about tagging. On the notarized platform, if you're an NOD, I don't have to worry about tagging. They tag them for me as well. So for that portion, that's how I'm going to say the comparisons where um, they tag for us so you can, so that's already done. Whereas when you're your own signer for, or your mm -hmm. own business, Mm -hmm. where you're doing your own, like Brenda and Jake, they have to tag their own. So it's going to depend on the platform. Um, I like both. I like Notarize. I like Amrox. I've done, like I said, I've done both. I, I can't really complain about either one. They're very self-explanatory where you're just clicking and going to the next page, click into the next page, the signer clicks and they sign their portion of the document. So for that part, I have to say they're, they're comparable. I, I, I'm happy on both. Okay, let's see what uh, this is addressed to you, Brenda. 
I know. I'm a good article on my site. Um, okay, Nikki's Universe. You can. Okay, Brenda has a good article. I'm glad. I'm, I'm not sure. Yes, it is legal for Texas notaries to do I nines. Okay, I'll it's take not this a one. Yeah, <laughs> I could yeah. take. Oh, who's? Or you're going to take it? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No. So, are I nines? Can you do remote? Can you do I nines with remote online notarization? Right now, the answer is no. If you go to the I nine website, it says it specifically in the verbiage saying that you cannot do i9s with remote online notarization they're very specific do you have signers that will upload or ask you to do it yes because they're thinking you can do anything right but it's you the notary that needs to know whether that's a document that you can do online or not so right now we can't but are we working with the irs here at notarize to hopefully change that Yes, because I think that's a document that should be able to be done remote online notarization, especially with the pandemic, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. right. There's just no notarization to be done. It's just a signature. So, you yep. know, they should, I mean, you would think they would allow it. So, yep. you would yep. think. Okay. Dennis Jordan says, I hear you have to have separate ENO for Ron other than the ENO for direct signings. Is this true? That depends on your state. Very good. That's a state. Mm -hmm. So Florida, yes. Um, I don't know. Of, actually, I don't know of any other state that requires it. But Florida does require an additional bond for someone that's going to do RON versus traditional notary. Okay. Let's see. I think you already answered the yep. question from Sharon B., right? Yep. We're getting there. Just okay. See, what do you recommend for NSAs not familiar with general notary work to do the retail and business queue on notarize besides the NNA notary essentials? Good question. Great mm -hmm. question. Um, you're a notary, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just apply the same things that you do as traditional. A notary is a notary is a notary. Whether you're doing traditional or you're doing RON, you're going to make sure that if your acknowledgement requires as a Virginia notary that you have to have your venue, the signer's name, your um, date of the notarization, you're going to do the same thing that you do, even as you're as an NSA, right? All your documents are just a document that requires a notarization. Sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on being an NSA or, or LSA loan signing agent. And that's because we've learned now to explain the documents a little bit more. But at the end of the day, your notarization is what counts at the end of the day. When that title or that lender gets the document, they want to make sure that you've notarized that document correctly. So that's right. sure that you've got everything that's required per your state. Because guess what? You may not do it, but guess what? That lender and that title agent, they know what's required. And they're going to want their refund or they're going to want you to redo it. And guess who, who has to eat that cost? You as the notary have to eat that yeah. cost. But now you're doing it again. Yeah. So make sure you know what's required per your state to notarize a document correctly, compliantly. And I, and I, I can get on a soapbox on that, so I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, can I jump in really quick? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So it, it's really important, whatever platform you pick, if you know that you might have an issue or the client might have an issue, to have the ability to pivot and initiate an entire new transaction. So definitely understand what you're legally allowed to do, what you're legally obligated to do, and then what your software allows you to do, because that will help you make the determination on what platform is right for you. And that's my two cents. Very good. These are such great questions, don't you guys think? Let's give yeah. the audience a um, round of applause. Thank you, audience, for all your questions. It's awesome. Brenda. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the question by, from Belinda and yeah. her interest in accepting. I do not have a problem accepting passports. They have embedded, um, what do you call them? Little things. <laughs> They're things embedded in them. The barcode? That, yeah, huh? The barcode? Chips. Well, the chips or whatever you know the yeah. passport has those in there and um actually <clears throat> i like using a passport because 
technology seems to capture them quicker and easier for some reason. But um, I don't, you know, even though my platform can accept foreign passports mm -hmm. with no problem, I don't feel that I can because that just it doesn't pull the KBA that Texas needs. And I think to get off into that, it's a little more than everybody wants to know right now. Mm -hmm. But if you know the new folks, um, we can, we're, we can explain it later. But right now, I just think you need to know that it's okay to use a passport as far as I'm concerned. I think you, a, could, you could even go and just even a little bit pique their interest, right? For them to do a little um, research on their own. So yeah. passports for a Texas notary is allowed for mm -hmm. all notarizations. The only time you can use a foreign passport in it's for Texas. real estate, right? It's for real estate, but, it's something but the point, to know. Yeah, and and that is important to know. But it's uh, on on uh, online notarization. The KBA doesn't pull from a foreign passport. Yeah. They'll have right. to have that. Like Amy said, they need to have that American address, that American credit. Um, U.S. credit in order for them to pull those. Right. Yep. Can I throw two cents in here? Yep. So just so you all know that MISMO is looking at invalidating KBA eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're saying that it's not an effective way to attribute who is who. Yep. Because quite honestly, I can answer for my dead husband, my ex-husband. Okay. But, but yeah, you know, there's a loophole there that they've now acknowledged mm -hmm. in addition to, yes, I could answer for him, but in addition, a foreign signer can't validate with that because we can't access that data. So they are now opening their eyes to alternative methods, which is why come January 2022, Florida can use biometrics in exchange for KBA. So there's a huge door going to open with a lot of different states as that rolls out. So keep that in mind. But yes, KBA is a pain. Brenda, I kind of want to add it on to what you're talking about just lightly because I know it can be a very intense conversation, but until Secretary of State issues a ruling, and this is for Texas, since we were talking about the foreign passports, those of you, as Jacqueline mentioned, in, in person, we can use foreign passports. Technically, what you can do traditionally, you should be able to do with Ron. There's verbiage, and again, I'm not an attorney, but in the law says that the issuing source must be the one that releases that data to confirm it's legitimate. Foreign countries will not allow access to a, another foreign country in the interest of state and national security. So the verbiage is very gray. Some people will argue saying you can. For me, I will not take them because I, until we have something from SOS. So there's still parts of Iran that are gonna be very gray and you might just need to bow out on some of these things when you're not 100%, excuse me, 100% sure from your governing body. Ditto, I love it. Air on conservative instead of going the other way. <laughs> You don't want to be on that panel because they're going to look at your video. And if you're in bed as the notary, they're going to, you're going to be all over the news and get the wrong ID. <laughs> and I'm just going through this while you guys are talking, trying to see if we have any other questions. That we There's one more for Dennis. I wanted to kind of just circle back. But I think he was asking about ENO, but it's important okay. to know yes. about the bond. He's in Texas, I believe. I saw from an earlier comment. Uh, so in Texas, it's the, just a fee you use the same bond but for errors and emissions this is still so new i think there's so many answers none of us are licensed insurance agents but if any of you are incorporated or just talk to your insurance agent regardless you really want to start looking into uh cyber insurance and things like that uh, obviously as a notary you're still personally liable but it would not hurt to tap into um, policies or endorsements that serve other people that do something similar, maybe not notarization, but you know, electronic uh, commerce. So I would definitely look into that. Also, he had asked, can you be signed up with multiple RON service companies and platforms? It seems logical in case one is slow and another has uh, customers coming. 
I know we've answered that, but because he's in Texas, we are only allowed to have one digital certificate on file at a time. And those of you that have been with us earlier, if you're watching later, um, I didn't trust seems to be the forefront. You know, I'm not endorsing them, but they are popular um, with many of the platforms. Mm -hmm. um, with those of you that use Sonix and or another platform that it's provided for you, you have to update that certificate every time you switch it. And if you're like me, my notary profile with the SOS looks like a CVS receipt because every time I change it, it gets longer and longer. Um, so yes, you can have multiple platforms. Yes, you can be with multiple signing services, but the moment your digital certificate is switched, that's when you need to update SOS electronically. And it's immediate. You just go online and do it finish your assignments that you're going to be using and then switch back if you'd like. Awesome. That's great. Hey, I want to address um, Dennis Jordan. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is about his, you know, about it pays terrible. I, if I've seen this remark a few times. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry he feels that way um, and that he's going by what other people are giving him. But um, until you really sit down and do your research and get a pencil and some paper and maybe an Excel spreadsheet, you're not going to know whether you need cardboard sandwiches. I mean, cardboard boxes and cheese sandwiches or not, Dennis. And I don't listen to what everybody tells me. So, you know, I do I do my own research because they may not be telling you correctly. Correct. Very good. So, yay, we made it through, y'all. Y'all have been so awesome. And uh, what I want to do is let's just do, yeah, we're running out of time here. Let's do a, a little outro. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And like we said, we're not selling anything, but we do want to recognize the speakers and just, again, let them tell you a little bit about themselves and how, why don't you each tell them how they could reach out to you if they're interested in getting in contact with you, either by social media or your email or your website. And Amy, you can go first. Oh, I'm the lucky one. Okay. So I'm Amy. I'm Ohio notary and I'm owner of cyberizeit.com. C-Y-B-E-R-I-Z-E-I-T.com. You can reach me there. There's a phone number you can call or text or email me anytime we are available. And I am so glad that everyone joined tonight. Thank you so much. Woohoo! Let's have a round of applause for Amy. Thank you, Amy, for answering all those questions. <laughs> and next we have Jake. Thank you so much, Jake, for participating and providing all of those great answers too. Tell us where the audience can reach out to you. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me and thank you all for asking questions and participating. And I guess I would like to know if we'll have something in the near future or ongoing. This would be very intriguing to keep going. Uh, but I am in Texas and I am the owner of DFW Notary, which is a national signing service. And I am co-owner with Miss Brenda of Notary Start. We do a lot of uh, collaboration. You also will see us on Facebook and larger groups as admins. Brenda is the owner of quite a few of those. And I, again, appreciate you guys. And thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Oh, gosh. It looks like we had a flood of uh, more comments and I didn't even realize it. Um, and Brenda, thank you so much. Oh, for sure. Coming. For we sure. Really, now, really this was our it. pleasure. Yay. We, we very, very much enjoyed it. I don't think we hit the topic, though, of um, how to ch what platform should you belong to? I mean, oh, we, my gosh. That's right. I don't feel so like listen. we really hit that. So maybe we need to, you know, do a quickie, just maybe a presentation to give some parameters. I mean, you know, just a brief presentation to do some parameters in the near future. Okay. Well, to what Jake said and you said, if all of the panelists would like to come back, we can do this again next week, same time. But you guys in the audience, let us know if you'd like for us to come back and maybe make this a regular deal. Just hit pound deal d-e-a-l and let us know good point brenda that's awesome <laughs> i was like <laughs> hey yeah, yeah you know what i don't think we did address, address that but we it's and because it's okay. we had i mean i think everybody got the very questions they wanted answered yeah. so that's what we're here for but uh if anybody was was coming for that purpose then <laughs> you know 
Uh, and we yeah. will address, uh, we'll do it the same way. We'll have questions. We'll have a form where people can ask those questions ahead of time too. So Brenda, let us, let the audience know how they can reach you. Now y'all need to know that Brenda is an excellent writer. She writes a blog. And when I first started getting interested mm -hmm. in being a notary, I went to Brenda's blog. She is a wealth of information. And some of you may not know that she actually wrote for the AAN for many, many years. She was the okay. primary, primary writer. So those great articles that you see, they come from Brenda. So Brenda, <laughs> how can they reach out to you? Um, my, my email address is Brenda at stone digital dot me. And um, currently right now, um, I, you know, I, I'm involved. I'm doing a few things right now. We said we weren't going to do any selling here, but if you ask me for help, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that I'm, I'm, my time is so short that I'm probably going to try to get you into some kind of something so you can pay me for a little of my time. And I don't mean to be that way. It's just that if I'm going to tell Jake, no, because I'm doing this, then I'm, you know, so if you do have like a question I can answer with one sentence, right away but if it gets too involved i might have to you know i don't want you to think i'm ignoring you that's all anyway mm -hmm. thank you thank you yeah. thank you so much let's give brenda and jake a hand a round of applause thank you thank you, thank you for coming i and forgot next, to put where you can find me i'm telling you i think i'm falling asleep I'm gonna be found, just <laughs> oh jake tell us where we can find you and i'm really to quick you. i'm sorry um on instagram and twitter at Notary Alliance on Clubhouse at Texas Notary. Perfect. That's easy, easy enough. Yes. And then we've got your website up there, notarystart.com. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jacqueline from Notarize, thank you so much for coming. You are a you are awesome, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And we hope that you're going to come back and you'll be regular. Count me dead. I am ready. You know, oh, I love talking, Ron. <laughs> yay. This has been so much fun. So tell the audience how they can reach you and get in contact with you. Wonderful. So Jacqueline Phillips, Director of Notary Engagement Education at Notarize. The best way to reach me is Jacqueline at Notarize.com. I'm one of the lucky ones that since I was one of the first ones, it's only my first name. You don't have to put my last name. So just Amazing. Jacqueline at Notarize.com. You can always find me on Facebook um, or you can find me at Clubhouse Notary Guru. Um, but any of those ways you reach out to me and I will try to respond to you as quickly as possible. Everyone, like everyone says, we're all busy, but we will try to get to you as quickly as possible. <laughs> Yay! And Taylor says, Margie, Amy, Jay, Brenda, Belinda, Brenda, and Jacqueline. All right. So, in all honesty, just full disclosure, that's my daughter. Just yes. saying. <laughs> but and I but on a side note, in addition to find us on social media, you can also find us on Clubhouse. We all host or co host or are participants in rooms throughout the week. So definitely follow us on Clubhouse. If you're not there, look us up. We would love to hear you in that session. Uh, Amy, someone wants us to put our names back up there. I don't know how they disappeared. What do we need to do to get the names? They want our names back we, up on the screen. Last time when you went closer. We have to remove the banner, which is available. Hold on here. I thought we removed. See, I removed. There we go. Here. There we go. There it is. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Because I think people still wanted to see that. So, y'all, this has been a fun evening. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we hope we'll see you again next week. Same place, same time. We will send out an announcement to make sure that all of our panelists are available. And thank you again for joining us. And we are going to call it a night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. Bye-bye.